selected a number of ethnographic objects from the collection of my colleagues. So I don't have the biggest wood collection in the museum for Central Africa. In fact, my colleagues have. The colleagues who work with the ethnographic collections, they have 200,000 different objects from Central Africa, also from Western Africa. And I have only in my collection, in my Zalarium, uh, 63,000 specimens and uh, 13,000 species. Um, so I made a selection and I grouped the sculptures uh, according to the wood species. Uh, I will also show you some tissues and cells and some trees which are always present when you talk about wood. And I give you a kind of historical overview. I will start with the origin. Uh, so the, the, the wood sculptures uh, have, were born in the forest. I will talk about old ethnographic objects and one single very old ethnographic object. And the origin of uh, sculptures, uh, African sculptures, is of course the forest. Uh, so the biggest part of the material culture in Central Africa consists of uh, wooden uh, sculptures. And there are many reasons to choose for wood for uh, establishing the material culture, because wood is omnipresent. I will not be the first to um, claim this um, statement and not be the last, but it's very easy to prove the importance of wood. When you measure the wood in a temperate forest, uh, you have at least uh, 250 tons of biomass per hectare, and per hectare, and 98% uh, is wood and bark. Eh? So the rest are leaves and some earthworms, and two kgs of game per hectare. Uh, but the biggest part in the forest is wood, and when you study wood, forest ecology, uh, that's my point uh, to my colleagues in Belgium, you should have at least some knowledge about wood and uh, cambial activity and growth of trees. In the tropical rainforest, the amount of biomass, the amount of wood is even bigger than that. Eh? So 440 tons per hectare in a tropical rainforest, dense tropical rainforest. Uh, of biomass, and the biggest part is wood, of course. This means that 82% uh, of the terrestrial biomass is uh, concentrated in the forests, which occupy, for the moment, still 30% of the area, of the continents. So because the trees in the tropics are big, eh, in the rainforest, they are extremely big, 50% uh, of the forest biomass forest phytomass uh, is in the tropics and in a country like Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, almost 50% of the wood of the African continent is concentrated. So wood is extremely omnipresent, extremely important in a country like Congo and most of the other countries in Central Africa. So it's the primary source for sculpted wood for material culture in general. To bridge from nature to culture, you need to cut trees. Uh, and this bridge is made of wood. Um, first, you have to make space. So without space, you can't do agriculture. So culture of agriculture refers to the very first meaning of culture. So the Latin word cultura, which refers to the turning of the topsoil, so the practice of agriculture. In extension, there are other words like uh, apiculture, eh, bees, uh, pisciculture, fishes, uh, silviculture, eh, so the growing of trees or the managing of forests, uh, to obtain the material that you need. Um, but anyhow, you have to cut trees. Eh? So without, without cutting trees, no culture, no material culture. This is the first bridge from nature to culture. 
here you see uh, rizi culture, eh? rizi culture, the culture of rice, rice field in Congo. So you see culture in the foreground and nature in the background. So no culture without cutting trees. Second bridge from nature to culture is uh, energy, and the third bridge is the construction and the tools. Eh? So a billion, two billion tons are exploited from the forests every year. 50% of this exploited wood is for firewood. And in a country like Congo, eh, Democratic Republic of Congo, 80% uh, of the domestic energy is from wood. Here in Tanzania, it will be higher than that, I think, because in Congo there is some uh, hydro power, which is probably not so important here in this country. So I, for countries like Kenya and Tanzania, it might be over 90% the domestic energy that comes from wood. And we should not forget that uh, the paper that uh, we are using to make uh, notes is also born in the forest, so 330 million tons uh, is cut for pulp and paper. So the very oldest uh, sculpture in Central Africa uh, has been found in Angola and is been, uh, has been dated uh, uh, by radiocarbon, uh, carbon date, it's uh, around the uh, uh, 8th uh, century. Uh, it has been found by luck, uh, by digging a, a well for prospective mining. And they came across this sculpture, they dated it, but it's very mysterious. So there is no information on the function of this sculpture, uh, also no precise information on what it represents exactly. It might be uh, an, what they call an art fark, eh? so a kind of uh, wild boar, but smaller than that. And it might have been used as a kind of headdress during rituals. So this very old sculpture has been sculpted in uh, Pterocarpus, eh? Pterocarpus angolensis, which also grows here in uh, Tanzania. It's called uh, Monija, eh? so that's the most important commercial name for this species. It's uh, very important in the, in the dry forests and the, and the woodlands, in fact. Uh, so Tanzania, Angola, uh, one of the important timbers, and uh, there are also, also some masks uh, in this wood, which is a little bit uh, amazing because it's a hard wood, it's not so easy to carve, and it's uh, relatively heavy to wear as a mask. So here you see the example of a, a mask, a dancing mask collected in Zambia, uh, originally also from Angola, and carved into uh, Pterocarpus angolensis, which is not a red wood. Uh, sometimes uh, the color, of course, is not uh, very stable, but it's not the real red wood that uh, is originally from other species from the same genus, like this one. This is a, another object. It's a baga uh, snake, eh? so a very typical. Uh, sculptures for this particular tribe, eh, the Bagas. Uh, this is, most of these snakes are sculpted in the Pterocarpus, uh, not Angolensis, but probably Pterocarpus tinctorius or Pterocarpus soyuxi, uh, commercially traded as uh, paduk wood. Another example is this uh, drum, uh, slit drum, uh, extremely important for African cultures, traditional African cultures. Uh, there are more drums and many other species, but uh, quite a number of them are uh, carved into, um, out from um, 
Tyrocarpus um, soyoxi or one of the other Tyrocarpus species. So with this type of drums, uh, messages could be spread quite fast in, in the past. Uh, so the drums were uh, established uh, on the river bank and it was possible to produce two types of sounds, a high pitch female uh, sound and a low pitch uh, male sound. So it was possible to uh, spread messages quite quickly with this type of drums. In traditional African culture, the houses uh, did not last for a long time. So there, is, there was a practice, and there still is the practice of shifting cultivation. So after a couple of years, uh, people moved to another patch of forest, which is uh, locked and burned and cultivated for a number of years. Uh, the houses were abandoned, except for some central posts, the doors and the door posts. So parts of houses were moved to other agricultural fields. And some of these posts uh, happened also to be carved from uh, Pterocarpus, still the same species. With Pterocarpus, also the color can be used. And so it's a red wood, very typical red wood, very durable, it uh, persists for a long time, also in tropical conditions in, in, the, in the forest. Uh, but the, some of the locks are left in the forest and are decayed by, by all kinds of uh, fungi and uh, termites, uh, insects. Uh, so it's easy to turn uh, a lock that is half decayed into powder. And this powder is used for uh, sculpting, for fashioning all kinds of figurines. So it is mixed with palm oil and dried, and it, is a, it was and still is a very valuable material. So it has been used as currency in the past. These uh, pieces of um, pterocarpus powder, and they call it angula. It's quite typical for most of the Bantu cultures. So the red color has also been used to um, paint other sculptures. Eh? So the sculpture that you see here is not from Pterocarpus this time. It's from Vitex, one of the Vitex species, one of the very common species for traditional African sculptures. And uh, this particular sculpture has been ordered by a young groom um, to be sure of his fertility. So the sculpture has been placed before his house. It has been painted with pterocarpus powder, with angola, and it put it before the house to be sure about the fertility. So the red color is a kind of uh, multifunctional color in traditional African ethnography. It can be used to as a kind of metaphor for uh, fertility, also for the blood of the hunt, also for the, the color of the rising sun and this kind of thing. So there is no universal meaning of this red color of uh, Pterocarpus. Another very common color in the traditional African uh, sculptures is white. Eh? White which is not from wood, it's from uh, clay mineral, chylonite. And this is, as a species, as a wood species, even more common, more important than the, the previous ones. Uh, as well in West Africa, Central Africa, and also here in Tanzania, Eastern Africa, uh, Crossopteryx, uh, probably the ideal species for sculptor. It can be sculpted in all the directions. It's extremely stable, not too soft, not too hard. And uh, my predecessor, who worked for a long time, a big part of his career on this uh, identification of ethnographic uh, sculptures, 
found it for certain tribes as really the very common uh, wood species for small sculptures and utensils. Another important one is uh, Ricinodendron. This is not used because of um, religious regions, but because of the tree is common, uh, easy to cultivate, easy to plant, easy to cut as well. It can contain a lot of water. And uh, the final object is uh, quite light, which makes it very interesting to produce masks. Eh? So a mask should not be too heavy. So this, this is one of the emblematic objects of the ethnographic collections of our museum. It's a luba mask, a buffalo head, eh? so mixed buffalo, mixed man, uh, expressing the power of a traditional uh, chief. So buffalo can also be very calm, but at a certain time be very aggressive. More ricinodendron um, furniture. Eh? So there's uh, the side uh, board of a bed. A coffin also in ricinodendron. So when you need a big tree, big objects, eh? take your ricinodendron. It's easy to cut as a big tree and it's easy to sculpt. Another one, also extremely important, eh? so there are very important tendencies in the choice of wood for uh, traditional African uh, sculptures, is this uh, Alstonia. So Peter already, already talk, talked uh, about uh, Alstonia, not species and not uh, congensis, but uh, Buni. Uh, you find it very easy among traditional African sculptures, but also in the new tourist art. This is an extremely light wood, probably uh, lighter than balsa wood, so not more than 80 kgs per cubic meter, which makes it as light as uh, polystyrene. Inside the wood, you find an, a number of bizarre wood anatomical phenomena, um, so included phloem, um, uh, very, two types of parenchyma, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to do to make a complete description of this particular species. And this very light wood, eh, so light than balsa, is also interesting to produce shields, the shields which should not be too heavy to carry in the war or during ritual dances. Another emblematic sculpture from the collection is uh, carved from Canarium. So the fetish statues. One of, this, one of these, uh, the most uh, beautiful one, will travel one of the next weeks or months to America for an uh, exhibition, temporal exhibition. And these are doors uh, in very heavy wood, very hard wood, extremely difficult to carve, very durable also, so you can carry these doors from one village which is abandoned to another village. Many times it's uh, Diospirus, so the real ebony, which is exceptional in the traditional African culture. And some dugouts, also in different, and so this is one in uh, Mahoney, one of the African Mahonies, which shows itself as a tree like this, uh, so one of the forest giants. And I come to this last couple of slides uh, with a message for the future. So in the traditional African cultures, you find also a number of very famous objects, very famous sculptures, which bear uh, a message, an ecological message for the future. So this is a mother and child, a maternity, and it is a kind of metaphor for the care that uh, we should have for future generations. This is another example. And 
with this last slide, uh, I would um, join the common message of this conference, which is also sustainability. You, s you found it in the, one of the subtitles, and it will be the message of many of the other talks today and tomorrow, I think. Thank you. <laughs>